So let's talk about seafood. See if seafood is any better for us and any better for the world. So little things about fish. Fish are actually pretty amazing creatures. Um, they're smart. Some tests have shown that fish are even smarter than primates, that they have long-term memory, um, that they can be taught things. They have social structure. They have cultures. Um, you know, they, they have a social hierarchy. And um, there's some um, male fish that will protect the eggs that, that the female has laid, and they make sure that they use their, their fins to make sure the water is fresh and the eggs are getting plenty of oxygen. So they're pretty fascinating creatures. They also like affection. I mean, you can see how sometimes fish will swim close to each other, you know, real, real gentle, and they'll um, swim by each other. So they're actually fascinating creatures. The thing is that they're under the water and we don't see them. And so we don't have that same relationship to fish that we do with, you know, for example, furry animals. So aquacultures, has anyone heard of an aquaculture? So aquacultures, we're gonna be learning more and more about these. Um, there's the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, which is another governmental agencies, and this agency um, kind of puts the aquaculture in a really, really nice light. It's kind of the same thing as when I talked about the farm, and you see the farm that's painted red, and you got your little pig there with a smiley face and the green pasture lands. That's kind of what they're doing with the aquacultures. So what happens is this is fish farming, and what they do, this picture here is another picture. They, they try and make it look pretty. Um, this one is, I believe it's in Hawaii, so you've got the, the beautiful ocean around it. And, but there's, um, there's so many of these, and what they do is they grow the fish in there. And they use it for breeding and they use it for research. And um, the aquacultures can be either like this, where it's a, a netted in kind of pen. Um, there's other ones that are tanks that can be, you know, either, you know, in the water or they can be on, on land. Um, and there's, so there's different ways to do it. Um, so the demand for, for um, seafood is going to be doubling they project um, by 2040. So that's a huge, huge increase. And it's been increasing. I mean, we can see that it's been increasing. You know, things like shrimp used to be, uh, you know, a very special occasion. And now people have shrimp all the time. So you can see the demand is increasing. Um, but we need to look and see, are they concerned about us? Are they concerned about the environment? You know, they're concerned about what's going on. Well, the, the NOAA, what they did is um, they decided in their infinite wisdom that they wanted to make sure that some of these fisheries in Hawaii were able to keep on fishing. One of the problems with these aquacultures is that it is affecting the other sea life. So. We have humpback whales and sperm whales and um, killer whales, and they're all on the endangered species list. And so this um, NOAA, um, what they said is um, these fisheries are able to catch these whales as part of incidental. They're incidental. Um, and so under normal circumstances, if any one of us would harm one of these creatures, you know, we could again be prosecuted. But with the fishery, because it's an incidental catch, they're not trying to catch the whale, um, it's going to be okay. So you can see that they're not really concerned about what's going on in the world, what's going on with endangered species. 
They're concerned about the bottom line. They're concerned about the fisheries. They're concerned about, you know, making a, a quick buck. So talk a little bit more about fish farming. I love this little cartoon. You got all these fish trapped in a little fish farm saying, please, please, you know, let the world know what's going on. And this is kind of what it's like because people don't realize what fish farming is and what actually is going on. So this is a fish farm. This is more like a fish farm. Um, viruses and bacteria are rampant just like they are on the feedlots. Um, and these viruses are transmitted by the fecal oral route. They can persist for months in the mollusks and in the soil, um, in the water, in the sediment. These are really, really virulent um, viruses and bacteria. They can survive freezing. They can survive like um, refrigeration and disinfection and they can survive like UV. Um, they can't, however, survive heat. And so it's recommended, I mean I just love these terms, it's recommended that you might want to cook these things. So, but what do people do? They, they eat oysters all the time and they eat raw oysters. And so you're potentially being exposed to these horrible viruses that can get you, you know, deathly sick. So it's really important to know where the food comes from. And like I said, the aquacultures are identical to the concentrated animal feeding, um, animal feed lots. They're, they're the same thing. It's just underwater. We don't see it. And most of us don't really know about this stuff. But it's contaminating not just the fish in, you know, the confined condition. It's contaminating the sea life all around. And it's really having a detrimental effect on the earth. It's creating a huge imbalance. So fish farm. This is what a fish farm looks like. Another one, another picture of it. And um, what they're, they're fed pellets and they get, um, they get fish, salmon are, are predator fish, and so that means that they eat other fish, smaller fish, other fish. And so what they'll do is they'll get fish, they'll, they'll grind them up, they'll, because these conditions are so tight and so intense, um, you know, and there's animal waste. You can't get, get rid of that. Um, there's viruses, there's bacteria. They grind it up with antibiotics, because antibiotics, you know, they're, they're great for everything, right? So they grind it up with antibiotics and they feed it to, to the fish. They also feed them other carcinogenic chemicals and it's going to combat, for example, the sea lice, which we're going to talk about a little bit um, further. But they put all these chemicals in the feed while the fish eat it and if you eat fish, you're eating it. And so it's an unhealthy food product. You know, it's just not going to produce health. People eat fish, a lot of people, because they want the healthy omega-3s. But that's not what they're getting. They're being promoted, you know, with the TV commercials and your doctor telling you to, you know, eat your fish. But the reality is you're not getting what you think you're getting. So... What they determined is that this can cause like devel developmental problems in kids. And so they recommend, I love this, they recommend that young children, women of childbearing age, pregnant women, and women that are nursing, then maybe they should avoid farmed raised salmon. Um, if, I like this, if they're concerned with health impairment such as reduction in IQ and other cognitive and behavioral effects. I mean, who the heck wouldn't be concerned about these things? I mean, this is like insanity. Here's another picture of a salmon fish farm. And one of, one of the, the other issues about 
the fish farming that makes it so detrimental for the environment is they have to scoop up the prey fish, you know, the, the fish that the salmon eat, and they scoop that up so they can make it into the pellets of food and give it to, to the salmon. Well, when they do that, they're taking the food supply away from the wild salmon. And so the wild salmon don't have the food that they need to grow. So it's creating this, this vicious cycle. Um, other issues with farmed fish is farmed fish are vaccinated, which surprised me. I didn't realize that one. Um, they're fed antibiotics, which I knew about that one. The other one that surprised me is that they are fed synthetic pigment. So if you would buy a farmed salmon that was not treated with the pigment, it would be a sickly pale gray color. But with the pigment, it's a pretty pink. So you look at it and you think, oh my gosh, this is great healthy salmon. A lot of people look at the color of the fish to, to see you know, how healthy is this fish. You can't tell from the color anymore because they're feeding the fish the synthetic pigment. So the other thing is that in the, the fish farm, you saw in one of the little cartoons, there's all the, the waste that's being dumped on the, the bottom of the, the ocean. Well, it's high nitrogen, so it's, again, it's killing the, um, the other sea life, like the, the bottom feeders, you know, the shrimp and the lobster and things like that. So it's killing those animals. But the algae and the other things are proliferating. The, the plant life is proliferating. So you've got bacteria, you've got parasites, you've got all sorts of filth down there, and the bottom feeders aren't able to live. So farmed salmon is not a good solution. Sea lice. Okay. Sea lice is another thing that people aren't aware of, but these confined conditions of, of farmed fish, the sea lice is rampant, and they call it the crown of death. They have a name for it, and the sea lice, what it does, it's lice. So it, you know, eats the, the, the fish, it sucks their blood, and it will eat down to the bone of the fish. And so what will they do? They'll just, you know, chop the head off. So you don't know that your fish has been eaten up with sea lice. But one of the issues about sea lice, it's not just confined to the farm raised fish. Because the salmon, the, these, these farms are in an area where the wild salmon are. And so when the wild salmon swim by, the sea lice go to the wild salmon because there's just sea lice everywhere. So now the wild salmon are getting the sea lice. So the issue of uh, the issue of farmed raised fish um, is things are just getting worse. We're we're getting more disease, unhealthy meat, unhealthy food for us. But that's not the only problem that we have with the, the seafood. So people look at, at seafood and say, okay, well, that's farmed. I'm just going to get wild. Here's a problem with, with wild. It's how is the seafood caught? So there's three methods, the long lines, the trawlers, and the per scenes. And so the trawlers. The trawlers is this... They have different ways to do it, but it's these big, huge nets that they drag along the bottom of the seafloor. And what it does is it destroys the entire seafloor. And they don't just sweep it by once. They keep going sweeping and sweeping and sweeping. And if you ever look at these pictures of the coral reefs and, and beautiful sea life, all of that is, is going to be destroyed. Now, there's areas with the coral that the, the trawling doesn't happen. But just imagine 
what's going on down there. They just keep, it's like bulldozing. It's the equivalent of cutting down the forest of the, the rainforest. So it's really, really detrimental. And what it does is it kills other sea life. And it's killed, what, 150,000 sea turtles are killed annually by shrimp trawlers. The other thing is you have the shrimp trawlers and they're getting all their, their shrimp, but they have bycatch. And bycatch is all the other sea life that isn't shrimp. And so the shrimp trawlers, all they want is shrimp. They don't want all this other stuff. So what do they do? They throw away all the other stuff and it's dead. And they just throw it back in the sea. So it's destroying the whole ecosystem. And there's endangered species that are included in that. About 80% of the bycatch is, is discarded. The other thing that just came out in the news probably a couple of weeks ago, uh, I don't know if anyone has heard of it, is slave labor. So what has been happening is Thailand supplies about 80% of the shrimp of the world. And they supply to Walmart, Costco, and big, big companies. And what they've done is they've gotten slave labor to, well, not Costco and them, the, the Thailand um, trawlers. They need people to go out and feed the, the beds where the shrimp are. And so that's where the slave labor comes in. So the slave labor, they go and they feed all of the, the shrimp beds. And the way these people are treated, it's worse than you know, animals on, on the feedlot. I mean, it's horrendous, horrendous stories. But if you're interested, if you will just Google the Guardian and slave labor, it'll come up and you'll see the whole story about it. But who wants to be a part of that? I mean, who wants to be sitting down eating their, their shrimp knowing that, you know, people have died um, and in, been enslaved because, you know, you want to have your nice shrimp dinner? So long line fishing. So long lines can be probably, they can be like 75 miles long. I mean, these things are massive. And they've got hooks all over them. They can have like 2,500 hooks on it. And they catch like the bigger fish, swordfish, um, tuna, things like that. And what happens is they also have bycatch. And it'll be dolphins and other creatures that are part of the bycatch. So this is also kind of a, 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 dangerous, um, a dangerous method it catches juvenile fish because there's, there's standards on you can't get baby fish. You know, they want, they want the um, species to keep populating and so you can only catch fish that are a certain length. Well, these methods don't discriminate. You know, they just catch whatever's there. And so what the fisher, fishery does is they'll just discard that undersized fish. Well, it defeats the whole purpose of saying you can only catch fish that are a certain size. So there was a Hawaii-based swordfish fishery that was closed in 2000 due to um, them catching too many sea turtles, but it was reopened in 2004 under new management. So we'll see about that one. And then the, the Persines, and what that is, that's a big fish net, and um, Fishing is getting pretty high tech. So what they're doing is they got radar and they find out where the big schools of fish are and they get the, I'm gonna show you a picture of it right here. Oops, maybe not. Oh, here, yeah, that is the picture. Um, they get a big net and they circle around the fish and then when the school of fish is in there, they pull the string and um, it makes this nice little bundle where you can't, the fish can't escape. This is another one where you got a lot of bycatch. And so I was reading the book called Eating Animals, which I recommend to everybody. It's a really good book. And what the author was saying in that book is that for you to have your salmon dinner or whatever, your, your fish dinner, your plate would have to be five feet in diameter 
to cover, to take for all the bycatch that was necessary for that little bit of fish on your plate. So this is not sustainable. And we need to start thinking about our earth and taking care of our earth and seeing what's going to be sustainable. You know, look at, is it really worth it? First of all, is this food acting as medicine? And is it producing health in your body? Is it sustainable? Is it something that's going to um, hurt the earth? And so my philosophy is, let's get back to the basics. And let's start eating the pure whole foods. You know, let's take care of the soil. We're not taking care of the soil if we're eating you know, beef that's on a feedlot and we've got manure lagoons everywhere. <coughs> and I love this little diagram here because it talks about health. And in order to really have true health, you need to have health of the environment. You need to have health of, of yourself, um, you know, the animal health. So health is going to be all-encompassing. It's not just the health of your body. It's the health of the environment. And we can see that more and more these days when you look at, you know, at pollution. You know, if our environment is not healthy, we're not going to be healthy. So really looking at where the food source is and making your choices based upon that. Um, this is um, a conservancy, livestock conservancy. And if you are a meat eater, um, this is a, a website to check out and see if it resonates with you. I'm not a meat eater. I'm a realist, however, and I know that people are going to eat meat. Um, this is an organization that is concerned with the treatment of animals, and there's some farmers that you can look at, find online that are going to be raising healthy animals that um, they treat the animals well. They know how to farm. They know how to treat an animal. And it's going to be a more health producing piece of meat than what you're going to be getting at the supermarket, even at Whole Foods. And so again, food is your medicine. And you know, I urge you to think about food that way. You know, when you start to make these food choices, think about food that way. And is this something that is going to be creating health? And I always think of food as the most intimate spiritual thing that you can do, you know, eating food. Because whatever it is, if it's drink, if it's food, that becomes you. That is going to affect your brain, your thoughts, your emotions. It's going to be your muscles, your blood, your bones. That becomes you. I mean, there's nothing more intimate than that. So look at what your food choices are from that perspective. So... I offer, um, I'm an attorney, and so I offer advice on vaccines and vaccine exemptions, um, also birthing plans, which I talked about that a month or so ago, um, and legal advice for healthcare practitioners, and I also do personal injury, so people that have been injured in accidents. But I also am a practitioner, and so my philosophy, again, it's looking at food as medicine and let's make some changes so that you can have a healthy long happy life one of the things i want to point out real quick is a lot of people ask me how do you get protein i have a flyer here that has protein sources and they're all the, um, vegetarian protein sources so take a look at that so come back next week for that one and we'll see you then thank you mm -hmm.